Max altitude reached. If you've ever been to the beach in Galveston, you may have seen these long piles of rocks here along the seawall. But have you ever wondered what they're for? Welcome to Galveston Unscripted. Thank you to our video sponsor, The Daily News, Texas oldest newspaper, bringing you the news since 1842. Support your local newspaper, The Daily News. The plans and funding for these rock groins along the Galveston seawall were approved in 1936. And ever since then, these rock groins have been a staple of the Galveston Beach along the Galveston seawall, making them a prime destination for fishing and surfing. If you've been around Galveston long enough, you've probably seen these man-made rock formations and probably even heard them called a few different names. Groins, jetties, or piers. They are officially known as rock groins. But even when I worked for Galveston Beach Patrol years ago, the term jetty was perfectly acceptable and still commonly used. Jetties are built to protect inlets or ship channels. Groins are built perpendicular to coastlines to control beach erosion. And for your own safety, you have to be careful out here on these rock groins. Do not step on the greenish brown algae. This stuff is super slippery. You may have asked yourself at one point or another, what are these rock formations even for? Why are they here? Right along the Galveston seawall, there are 15 rock groins extending out into the Gulf of Mexico. And to start answering this question, the first thing we have to do is talk about the power of the sea. Now I would guess this rock right here weighs at least a ton, but you can see the water that's not even that powerful today, rocking this granite stone back and forth. Now the reasoning behind building these rock groins goes back to how Galveston Island formed in the first place, tens of thousands of years ago. It all comes down to sand and sand deposits. Now, Galveston Island is a barrier island on the Gulf Coast that formed over tens of thousands of years. The island is essentially a sandbar where sand and sediment has built up over time, eventually creating the island of Galveston that we know today. Now, the really cool thing about sandbars and coastlines like the one we have here in Texas is that it is always changing. You may not notice it on the scale of days, months, or years, but over decades and centuries, coastlines shift and change due to the currents of the ocean, and in our case, the Gulf of Mexico, which even goes back to why our water is not blue and crystal clear all the time. Now let's take it back to the 1800s, when Galveston began to build a jetty system at the entrance to the ship channel. Go check out the Galveston Unscripted video on the Galveston jetties. With everything, there is a give and a take, a delicate balance. One of the unintended consequences of building those jetties was that sand no longer deposited along Galveston's beaches the way it once had. And it didn't take too long to notice that that was affecting beach tourism here in Galveston, especially during hurricanes like the 1900 storm where it eroded away most of the beach line, and there was not enough sand flowing through this area, replenishing the beach. With the addition of the seawall after the 1900 storm, more and more visitors began to come down and visit Galveston Island, specifically to spend time on the beach. By the 1930s, it became extremely clear that the island needed to find a way to keep the beaches intact. And the design for these rock groins was developed. Now tourism and beach going was definitely not the only factor in mind when it comes to building these rock groins. But a beach line plays a huge factor in protecting the seawall itself. If there were no sand in between the seawall and the water, and the water was literally lapping up against the seawall, the footings of this 17 foot high seawall would eventually erode away and collapse, making it pretty much pointless to have this seawall here in the first place. If it's not strong, it is not gonna work and protect us from hurricanes. So when it comes to maintaining the intended purpose of the seawall, having a buffer between the seawall and the Gulf of Mexico was imperative. And without consistent sand deposit, engineers needed to find a way to keep the seawall as safe as possible so it could work as intended. So one of the goals behind these rock groins was to maintain the height and protect the integrity of the seawall. 
And we can even see how success is measured. Right here on the seawall, we can see this U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey from 1936, marking the elevation of the seawall. 15 rock groins were installed from 10th Street down to 61st Street to protect the beaches and bolster the seawall. The idea behind these rock groins is that sand and sediment could enter in between one another, but not exit as fast as they normally would without groins. Maintaining the level of sand on the beach, or at least slowing down the erosion in between each rock groin. We could see along certain sections of the seawall where water has done quite a number to the lower edge of the seawall. Now, right under my feet, under this sand, are tons and tons of rocks called riprap, stacked in a way to protect the base of the seawall. A really good place to see this is on the extreme east end of the seawall and the extreme west end of the seawall, where you can actually see where there's no sand covering up that riprap. But the best way to protect that riprap and in turn the base of the seawall is sand. Between 1936 and 1939, these jetties were constructed approximately 1,500 feet from one another. They were constructed with wooden pylons and steel sheet piles, as well as granite. The same granite used for the jetties at the entrance to the ship channel, which we've seen before in the jetty video. The original design and structure of these groins were rehabbed between 1968 and 1970 to make sure they would withstand the next century. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and check us out on social media. We are everywhere. And if you haven't yet, go check out the podcast. We've got hours and hours of historical content on that podcast feed. You will not be disappointed. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Galveston Unscripted.